Well, good morning, Olivia. Um, I hope you had a good weekend. Like, oh, look my hair. It looks like a little Walt Disney character's hair. Isn't that so cute? Just got a little whoop de doo there. Didn't notice that. Anyway, I hope you had a great weekend. And, well, I just hope you had a great weekend. I know I did. Um, Isaiah got baptized yesterday ah, in church. I was like, yes. Um, it was totally not a planned thing, but, um, they were baptizing and we talked to him and he has asked the Lord into his heart to save him. Um, he did that like the first or second week and we had him. He actually, we had taken him to the cemetery to, um, go visit Philip's mom at the cemetery. And he started asking us questions about hell and, heaven and stuff and we asked him if he would like to accept Jesus as his savior and he did that's it's been probably about two months ago and so he saw people get baptized at MCC when I was there and he asked me about baptism and everything and real oh, real curious about our baptismal at MCC and yesterday uh, someone else was getting baptized and I leaned over to Philip and I said ask Isaiah if he wants to get baptized and he was like yeah so he got baptized so cool and we videoed it it's actually on my Facebook we show all those videos and stuff so um, Isaiah's mom can see and stuff and I'm so glad we videoed that yesterday because she actually got to see him get baptized so it was so cool I am going to try to record enough time on here um, I had to let the Snapchat thing go because it was just eating up my memory. So, But I wanted to share this Bible study with you that I did this morning. It's out of my Bible study called My Daily Scripture Devotional, God's Wisdom for Today. And I did the uh, November 12th one, and I wanted to share it with you because, I don't know, just with you being a young person, this kind of hit on some of the things that young people are going through today. The scriptures are from the book of Proverbs, and it's Proverbs chapter 27, verses 1 through 9. I'll read those, and then I'll go into the devotional. It says, about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. Let another man, let another man praise you, and not your own mouth. A stranger, and not your own lips. A stone is heavy, and sand is weighty, but a fool's wrath is heavier for them. Wrath is cruel and anger is torrent, but who is able to stand before jealousy? Open rebuke is better than love carefully concealed. Faithful are the wounds of a fr excuse me, faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. A satisfied soul loathes, loathes the honeycomb, but a hungry soul Every bitter thing is sweet. Like a bird that wanders from its nest is a man who wanders from his place. Ointment and perfume delight the heart, and the sweetness of a man's gives delight by hearty counsel. And then this is what the minister had to say about the devotional. One of the most delightful things in life is finding your place. I speak to a lot of young people each year about the importance of making wise choices. I often tell them there are three crucial decisions everyone must make. Number one, choose Jesus or you will go to hell. Number two, choose the right spouse in hell. Number three, choose carefully what you will do for a living because you will spend a significant part of your life in your vocation. If you have a passionate desire to do a minute, if you have a passionate desire to do what you do, it will not feel like work. Making these important life choices starts with realizing you are a sinner in desperate need of a savior and expecting or excuse me, and accepting that Jesus is who he says he is the way, the truth, and the life. Choose Jesus and choose to live your life for him. Then marry 
the one you love and love the person he or she becomes. Give yourself completely to that person and make every effort to grow together. Lastly, do what you are gifted by God to do. Identify your gifts. Actually, it says identify your gift set. When I was in grade school, I had to write, I will not talk in class thousands of times. Ironically, now speaking is my vocation and my profession and calling. I am a preacher. You could have identified my gift set as a child, but I do. And I was created by God in my mother's womb to be an evangelist. You have a gift set and a purpose too. You will never be fulfilled or com- you will never be fulfilled or complete until you fill that God-sized void in your heart with a right relationship with Jesus and use your gifts in God's glory. Do what you do with passion, desire, and confidence. Be busy about the Father's business. You will be a blessing to others and you will be blessed. True wisdom comes from trusting in the Lord daily and allowing him to guide your steps. And that was actually written by Brian Fawcett, Fawcett Evangelistic Ministries from Dalton, Georgia. I, yes, I agree so hard, wholeheartedly with what he said. As you know, Liv, I've been married two other times before Philip. And it did not work out. But I can tell you, I can tell you that since I became a Christian and and met Philip, I've changed and life is different. Yes, number one, choose Jesus or you will die and go to hell. There's no ends, ifs, or buts about that. Making your eternal security for to choose to serve Jesus Christ is of utmost importance. It's more important than your grades, where you go to college, what you choose for your job. Choosing Jesus is the foundation of our life. And then two, choose the right spouse or you will feel like you're living in hell. Oh, that is so true. I can tell you from being married two other times. And if you have not chose Jesus and you're not seeking him, then you're going to look for what you would otherwise get in Jesus in someone else. And you are going to be trapped and you are going to feel like you're living in the middle of hell. That is so true because Jesus has to be number one. That That's just the way he created us. It's the way it's got to be. He has to be number one in our life. And then when we're looking for someone else, we are looking for characteristics that glorify him and that complete us and what our ministry and our mission and our desires in life are. So true. And then number three, choose carefully what you will do for a living. Yeah, your passion. What what is your what's your passion? What's your drive? Your goal. I want to help people. I want to change people's lives. What what do you want to do? When you were a little girl, you've always had such a heart to help people. Whatever you choose to do in life, Livy. Follow that passion of being. It is definitely what you were called to be, is a help. I love you so much, and I hope you have a great day. Love you, Livy. Bye.